Hi everyone, I'm Larry the Butcher. I'm going to start to do something that's one of the main reasons that I do the channel the way I do. I want to show you how to do butchering at home so you can save money on your food. Isn't that awesome? We'll be wide out for just another minute or so. I've got this. What is this you say? I'm glad you asked. It's Claude. No, no, not your buddy Claude that you go bowling with. It's a beef Claude. A beef Claude is on the front of a cattle. It's um, normally called a cross cut. The cross cut includes a couple other muscles and it includes some bones. I'm hoping to do that, do a whole chuck another day. Uh, but for today, we're going to start with the clod. Why did I use a clod? It's on sale. The apron, I feel like a British butcher, like a true butcher. But wait, now I feel like Chris the Butcher Hopwood. I was going to try to do a two camera again where you've got my face up in this corner and then on the project, but um, battery on my phone's dying, so I can't do that. I feel like I'm letting you guys down. I'm really sorry. The goal with this project today is um, I'm gonna have as little waste as possible, close to zero, and very little to grind. And I'm gonna grind in my KitchenAid. You've seen me done it before, so I'm not gonna. When you buy meat in a bag like this, you are going to get purged. So here we go. This part here is the cross cut. The, the whole thing is a clod. And I'm not going to do this through traditional means. Like when I'm at work, what I would do is I would take this off, I'd trim the fat off, take the silver skin off, tie it back together as a, as a commercial roast. Um, but we're at home. We're at home. We can take a little extra time and we can watch the graining of the meat. And we can do things that it's going to make battery dead. this little piece of meat Brand battery battery. better than anything except a prime rib. So this muscle here, if you were to spread it out far enough into the animal, is the brisket point. And I'll clean that up in a bit. What I want to do right now is I want to get as much of the silver skin off. A lot of places will grind the silver skin, they'll add it to lean trim. Um, the only trim I'm going to have here is what I make from this. I have nothing sitting at home to use this trim. Um, I don't expect to get more than a pound of ground beef. Actually kind of hoping to get less. Um, the goal is zero, but that's it's not really going to be. You know, one thing a lot of people say, you do this at work all day for eight, nine hours, then you come home and you do stuff like this again, and I get a ton of I'm very, very happy to be able to show what I do at work in a home environment. You can do this at home. I know you can. So there's a seam between the main cross cut. That's what I'm trying to work out. This muscle here, it's part of this muscle. And these are all muscles that, that work together up on the shoulder of the animal. This looks a heck of a lot like a flat iron, and I'm going to treat it like that. So this steak is done. Trim her off a little. So what I want to do now, look at the meat, here's the greening, it's going like that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half like this, then I'm going to take some of the fat that we've taken off and I'm going to tie it into two rows. 
And those will be two nice size roasts for my size of family. See the way the grain graining's going? Grain's going like that. You know what? This could be used for stir fry. This piece here is stew. Obviously, stew and ground beef are your lowest common denominators when it comes to breaking down meat. Treat that as a flat iron as is. This I might slice, do kind of like um, steaks. Or maybe beef chops. Beef chops, that's what we'll call it. One of the good things, um, we had these on sale, that's why I picked it up and I took it as is. Um, I have no beef in the freezer. Other than some hamburgers, we have no beef in the freezer in the house. So we have a seam right here, we're going to work this. Now this might be, no, nah, I don't know if it's a bonanza steak, but I can make medallions out of it. We are going to try one of the roasts on Sunday. And this, this very much brings you back into a relationship with your food. Like, do you know anyone else that butchers their own meat at home? Maybe you do. Maybe you're watching my video and the videos of other... I am looking for a bandsaw so that um, I do have a block down in, in my garage. I have a, a meat grinder that needs a little bit of work. Um, if I have a bandsaw then I can do a lot more butchery videos. And and really that's that's what I really want to get into that here on, on Larry the Butcher. Because yeah you might not have your own home butchery you might not be willing to do what I'm doing in my kitchen but you'll have understanding and understanding is very very powerful when it comes to buying your food and cooking it So I guess we can call this an inside clawed pot roast. Now in my house there will be no leftovers. But look at that. Here, I'll give you... That's not bad. That's not a bad size roast. Six pound bag. Inside clawed. Now, and another petite chuck roast. We are almost done here, guys. So right here is brisket. The 
brisket would extend that way. I'm going to leave that one as is, add in everything on it. Um, these parts here, let's see. This part and this part I'm going to cut up for stew. Those parts and these parts and treat like flat iron. We're almost done guys. I'm not afraid of, I was cautious with the, uh, the flat iron pieces because I don't know exactly when I'm going to cook those. I'm doing one of those small chuck roasts this weekend. Now stew beef is only as difficult as cutting it into cubes. You guys may not want to see this, but if you cut something the right way against the grain, it actually becomes very tender, regardless of the cut. That was really tender. I know I grossed some of you out, and I'm not gonna apologize. Like the meat is fresh; um, it hasn't been sitting out for a month. I used to love making chili with stew. I still love making chili with stew. What I would do when I worked for Homer is um, I would get the um, hangers. it cheapens the rest of the animal. You only get two for an animal. So if they offer hangers in a store and they have lots of them, don't buy it. Okay, so now I have two things left to do. I'm going to trim up the trim. I need to put more than I wanted. But such is life. There is none on it. I need to bake this up as is. So there's about two and a half, three pounds of ground beef. Um, ground beef, or I may work it into a sauce. I can cut it up into smaller pieces, make a sauce out of it. The fat I'm going to keep, I can mix this in with, um, I can render this down in boiling water add a pot the potatoes, vegetables, soups, stews, whatever I'm doing. And there is nothing for the garbage other than the bag. So guys, um, hopefully what I did here was show you how to take a piece of meat that you can find in a grocery store, a wholesale club, uh, a Costco, or if you have a slaughterhouse close by that has a retail store, go in and ask. And cut it up yourself at home. You can do this. I know you can. You know how I know? Because I can do it. Um, and you end up with flat iron steaks, two roasts, a brisket, something that resembles a brisket, some stew beef, some ground beef. And this didn't take me very much time. And it wouldn't take you much more time either. So guys, 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. Don't forget to like, comment down below, subscribe, hit that button right there, and hopefully I give you some insight in what happens at this end to make you better at cooking at your end. And you can do this. I have no doubt that you can do this. I, of course, am Larry the Butcher. Thank you once again. And we'll see you